Have you had any experiences of freezing yes. in Parkinson's? Can you describe that to us? Um, it first happened to me in our kitchen. I, I do more, just about all the cooking in the house. And <clears throat> I was preparing hot food in the oven, the casserole. And the oven door is a normal waste level one. And I bent down to take the casserole out to check whether the, the food was done or not. And as I turned to stand up with the casserole in my hands <coughs> in, a, in a small kitchen and put it on a work surface, my body just locked. I couldn't move. And the first time that happened, that was extremely annoying and, and scary as well. And it was a situation where it required a considerable mental effort just to make that move and force my body to turn and to move to a, a safe place where I could actually put the castle down in, without any danger. It's a particular concern <coughs> because our granddaughter stays with us at home um, every weekend and although there's personal safety is an issue obviously uh, with her in the house, it's of more concern than, than just me. Um, the conductive education techniques which I referred to a few minutes ago help because you get, you get told uh, various cueing techniques, chanting techniques, um, turning techniques which help you to unfreeze but it's still a very upsetting experience to undergo and the techniques aren't perfect. Uh, it requires a lot of mental effort to, and concentration to make, make the change. The, the key issue as far as I'm concerned is that you don't move your body first, you move your feet first. If you, you, the normal reaction is to turn your torso, that, that, that way it leads to falling and it's safer to move your feet first. And it, it requires a surprising amount of concentration to, to do that. Yes, you have to break it down into sections. That's yeah. right. Okay. Can I ask, if you go back to when you were first diagnosed, is there anything that you would want to do differently? I'd try and be more conscientious both with the voice exercises especially and with the physio as well. Uh, I said I'm someone who tends to do as much as I need to do to get by and therefore don't get the full value out of what's a very useful and very expensive service. Uh, it's, it's a personal issue, um, but I would I'd probably make more effort to be conscientious in those respects, I think, uh, because the, the service is available um, and it's a commitment on staff time to, to, to help me with these, these, these issues and I'm not done the business as far as that's concerned. Okay. That's what I would change. Okay. So as well as um, managing your Parkinson's symptoms by using medication, you also spoke a little bit about uh, some of the voluntary work that you've become involved in. Do you think it's important to be active, to maintain your stimulation levels to manage this condition? Absolutely. Um, the single biggest improvement in my quality of life has come from the fact that I got involved with voluntary work for the Parkinson's Disease Society mm -hmm. and also with the local National Health Service. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's been absolutely invaluable and people have remarked over the period of about 18 months that I've been doing the voluntary work uh, of the change in me since then. Um, it's quite easy to sort of say it's, it's nice to pay back and help out as well but uh, it's a, a enormous benefit because of a whole raft of, raft of things. People I've, I've met have been incredibly supportive, incredibly brave, some of them who are, like myself, Parkinson's uh, patients. Um, one of the benefits of keeping active is it helps you not to dwell on the, on the condition, it takes you out of the, out of the condition by and large, and that's, that's got to be positive. I've met extremely supportive people, both in the Parkinson's Disease Society and elsewhere as well, and it's useful on many occasions, not all the time, to compare your condition with them. And uh, I've come out of those comparisons very luckily on many occasions. It's been a very rewarding experience. Um, and uh, I don't think when I was diagnosed I would have said that anything about Parkinson's was rewarding, but I was obviously wrong. <laughs> and you now have some involvement with, well, a lot of involvement with the active persons group in, in the Tyneside and Teesside areas mm -hmm. and, uh, and have you found that quite useful? Very useful indeed. Um, I wasn't one for joining support groups when I was diagnosed. I didn't want to be hanging around with old ill people as I would describe them in boring coffee morning situations. Um, my attitude's completely changed. Um, there are groups for people of all ages and I was lucky enough to get involved with the Teesside one which is a little bit of a 
a track for us to, to get to, but it's certainly worthwhile because as soon as I was there, the, the big advantage of that sort of sport environment is the people in it know exactly how you feel. And I referred to the feelings of vulnerability that the condition can bring. That's one of the safest places I've ever felt uh, comfortable in because people that know exactly what you're talking about, they, they, they've got the condition and you can pick brains, you can whinge, you can get advice, you can get help uh, and you can do normal stuff. You can discuss music and have a pint in the pub. Uh, it's a most supportive environment, a very caring environment and uh, I've made some good friends as well. So my advice is give yourself time if you're diagnosed and aren't a group joining person but don't dismiss it because it's, it's a big, big plus as far as I'm concerned in quality of life. Um, real support from real people and it's made a big difference to me. Excellent. On the subject of advice, what, what advice would you give to people who work with those with Parkinson's disease as to how they can support people more effectively? First thing I think would be listen to us. Um, the does he take sugar syndrome is not welcome. Um, so listen, and above all, give a little time. I understand we're, we're just normal guys, but our body slowed down and requires a little bit extra concentration, a little bit of time for us to achieve just stuff which is, especially stuff which is second nature. Uh, it's a extremely frustrating condition and you can't really hurry when you get Parkinson's, much as you'd like to. Um, I'm very impatient, I've always been quick on my feet, and I think that's been one of the biggest um, adaptations I've had to try and make is to accept that I can't do things as quickly and as, as smoothly and as easily as I, I used to before. Um, so giving, being given a little bit more time without being a big issue out of it is a big plus for some of the Parkinson's. Appreciate the importance of medication timing um, and understand just how frustrating it can be for someone who's faced with the, 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 the this condition day to day. Um, that's about it, I think. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell people? Anything that you want to say? I've covered quite a lot of my normal soapbox talks, talk, like mm -hmm. join a support group. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the biggest advice, the biggest piece of advice I, I would, would give would be to take up volunteer work, I think. That's been the, the biggest plus as far as I'm concerned. Um, appreciate your family and friends. I've come to realise just how many really excellent people I know and um, the phrase I used to describe the relationship with my family in particular is that when I was asked by my daughter when I was diagnosed, how do you want us to treat you now that you've got Parkinson's dad? I said, it's exactly the same as it always treated me and unfortunately they've done exactly that. <laughs> uh, they give me what I describe as obviously no sympathy but loads of support yeah. and uh, that's something that's not the way I wanted but I, I know it's good for me. Um, it's very easy with this condition to, because you feel vulnerable, you can feel very isolated and have your dark days and dark times. Um, it's quite easy to want to stay under the duvet and it's not the best place to be. Uh, so less sympathy and more support um, concentrates my mind and helps to snap me out of it when I feel, when I feel poorly. Um, Some of which I did a couple of years ago was to be a list of things which Parkinson's can't affect or can't change and can't damage. Listening to good music, reading reading good books, um, the company and conversation with, with, with excellent friends, things which it so far can't be touched or hurt, hurt by, by Parkinson's and remind yourself of those on a regular basis. That's that's good, good positive thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can, um, the benefit of join up services. Uh, my personal experience has been excellent in that respect. They, they do work, it's not just a phrase, um, applied properly and if you get access to them um, it's, it's a huge benefit. And a sense of humour? Oh, you, you've got a sense of humour, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely and again I've got friends and family who are absolutely ruthless in that respect. Mm. Um, it, it always helps, I've heard I, I, all the jokes about uh, rock and roll really, lyrics, you know, uh, shaking all over. <laughs> Um, shaking Stevens, whole lot of shaking going on, I've had all that <laughs> and more and uh, it's, it's definitely good therapy as well, without a doubt. Good. 
Is there anything else that you want to say, Ali? I've said just about all I needed to say, I think, but I think for folk working with people with Parkinson's, um, trying to understand and allow for the fact that the condition varies quite drastically uh, day to day and almost hour to hour, minute to minute, that helps a big deal if, if, if you've got Parkinson's and someone can, can understand and appreciate that. And for someone who's got Parkinson's, I think if you can maintain a sense of um, realism and do stuff you enjoy doing mm -hmm. and keep doing it for as long as you can, uh, that's very positive as well and helps, it helps me. Thank you very much for being so candid with us and for your interview. We really appreciate your time and we appreciate you sharing your experiences of Parkinson's disease. Thank you. You're welcome.